we can actually produce our own raw materials, we can produce our own fabric, but there's not, not resources in Afghanistan. We've got very good cotton here in Afghanistan, but uh, there are no factories of manufacturing it. We've got wool, but the raw wool is exported into Pakistan, Afghan wool, and they, they bring it back and sell it on Afghan, which is, uh, which is a loss already. So if we get the resources inside Afghanistan, we can get the best wool, we can get the best cashmere, we can get the best cotton. And from there we can actually make, produce silk, produce uh, cotton fabrics, produce uh, suits fabric. So we don't have to rely on neighboring countries. So the Ministry of Finance has a target from the IMF to meet a certain amount of revenue generation. And um, so they increased uh, uh, telecom by another 10%. So it's something like 24% of revenue that telecom pay uh, and ISPs. They increased, uh, they doubled the taxes from 2 to 4 percent of BRT, doubled the customs from 2 to 4 percent on the basic uh, rate. And all of those um, are to quickly make, uh, make money and quickly increase revenue, which it did, and the government made its revenue target. But um, in the long run, um, it, uh, I'm worried that that will have a negative effect. I think the Afghan government really needs to rethink its economic policy. The, the current economic policy is mainly revenue-driven. Revenue-driven meaning that they have certain targets, that they want to meet that certain targets, and that it comes at a cost of, of companies trying to grow and expand. If it's a mindset or a mentality to, to re generate revenue at the cost of private sector development, I think uh, needs to be debated. Instead of squeezing existing businesses, uh, I think uh, work needs to be done to increase the tax base. Um, and, and, and maybe formalize the, the, the informal sector more so we can generate revenue instead of you know, squeezing the same businesses uh, for more taxes. Um, I would like the government to, um, to put together policies and regulations that are really encouraging for investors, encouraging for micro to small, medium to large um, investors. The government staff who are dealing with for example, licensing and, and taxes, and, and they belong to various uh, government organizations like uh, the municipality and Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Commerce for dealing with licenses. Um, they are sometimes not sure how to deal with certain issues. So they, they need to be trained and the policies and procedures need to be um, simplified and clarified uh, for their staff and for, for the people and should also be very encouraging to investors. Make it easy for everyone to be able to pay, uh, file, uh, complete their taxes, so that that's not their headache. They're not wasting time. Every minute that a business is wasting time with the government, that means one minute less away from the private sector, from their own business. That means one minute away from generating revenue to be able to pay taxes on to the government. So it's, it's, it's detrimental to the government itself. My recommendation or request from the Afghan government is to help support uh, or take the hands of all these entrepreneurs and help them grow their business. I firmly believe that for all the startups, the government, uh, the government should, uh, should give them tax breaks, like, you know, no taxes for the first two, three years. I think neighboring countries, you, we have great examples what they have done with entrepreneurship. If that's tax breaks or if that's uh, an environment that they can grow or a safety net for them to, to, for them to launch themselves. But in Afghanistan, in, uh, in Afghanistan that is uh, unfortunately missing. I think big, big companies and startups are being put in the same pool to, to, to compete and that's, uh, that's not possible. So startups require some nurturing. So my recommendation in order to improve the entrepreneurship in Afghanistan, we need something like a hub, a center that supports that. But the reason for this one is we have only about 4% of our money in the banks. So my focus is more and more on individual investors. Millions and billions of Afghanistan's resources are with them. Um, it's easier with them as well to work with rather than a financial institution in Afghanistan, but only a hub can connect these two communities, the investors and the entrepreneurs. My uh, recommendation, especially for the Afghan government and for the international friends, is to help these entrepreneurs in uh, providing them you know, more technical expertise, uh, trainings, mentorships and all that, instead of you know, just putting in cash into their businesses. I do not ever believe that um, all these grants or all these monetary contributions to, to, to the um, entrepreneurs 
will ever help them grow their business. The best way to help these companies is to provide them mentorship, provide them expertise, bring in consultants who can sit down, who could you know, help, help all these entrepreneurs in, in their accounting, in their finances, in their marketing, in business development, in helping them shape their ideas better. So in all those stuff. The other reason that is um, also relevant to the, the issue is that some of the entrepreneurs or do have, I mean, does have the idea, um, but they need support. They need um, consultancy, business consultancy as well. They do have the idea. They know how to develop their idea. They do have the technical background as well, but they ha they, I mean, require um, a consultancy. They require support in terms of the knowledge of business, how to enter to the market. That's it. So a hub can support them in any way. A hub can deal with any challenge on behalf of the entrepreneurship community in Afghanistan. There are a lot of issues, there are a lot of challenges, and there are always good solutions for almost every challenge in Afghanistan. The government alone cannot address uh, the issues. It cannot provide all services. It cannot address the needs of the, the, the uh, Afghan citizens. So that's why we need a strong private sector to contribute to the economic development. And without entrepreneurship, that's not possible. Entrepreneurs are focusing more on the social impact of their business. They're making new things, they're making improved things, they're introducing services and products that brings positive changes to the society. They're not only thinking about the margin they're going to have from their business. Collectively, all these entrepreneurs are, um, are creating thousands of jobs in the market. And as we get more and more entrepreneurs coming into the market and starting new businesses, uh, investing in new ideas, you will have more and more jobs being created. This concept, this mentality of entrepreneurship that you can um, create something of your own, uh, and you can employ yourself, you can create employment for others. This is really needed. This is what we need to do uh, right now. I cannot emphasize any further about how important entrepreneurship is. The Afghan government, the, the donor community, um, and the private sector have to come together, have to collaborate, have to coordinate, have to cooperate for our future generation to have a decent means of living in Afghanistan.